हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट असलकुम दिस इज़ डॉक्टर मोहम्मद शुब खान पी एच डी नॉर्थमी फ्राम यूनिवर्सिटी पुत्रा मलेशिया एन आई एम हेयर टूडे फॉर द एम्ब्रियोलॉजी लेक्चर सीरीज एन आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू माय फेलो कुलीग्स डॉक्टर सिद्रा मरियम एम फिल इस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड डॉक्टर जियाउल्ला एम फिल एनोटमी फॉर देल हेल्प इन द टूडेज लेक्चर प्रिपरेशन एज वेल एज for their help in the preparation of the lecture series of the veterinary embryology veterinary histology and embryology so what is histology histology is derived from the two greek words histos and logos histos means tissue and logos means study so the tissue study under the microscope is called histology sometime we use a term for the histology is also the microanatomy what is the microanatomy what is the anatomy anatomy is the study of form and structure and what is microanatomy so when we study the form and structure under the microscope that is called the microanatomy so histology is the study of tissue simply we can say or we can say histology is the study of tissue under the microscope so what is embryology embryology is the study of the formation and the development of an embryo to fetus embryology is derived from two greek words the embryon means the unborn embryo and logias or logos mean the study so the study of an unborn embryo is called the embryology so if we need the detailed definition then we can say the branch of the biology that studies the prenatal development of gametes leading to fertilization and development of embryos leading to fetuses means embryogenesis bhi hum usko keh sakte hain that gametogenesis se lekar formation of gametes se lekar spermatogenesis oogenesis capacitation fertilization and then the different developmental stages of the embryo and the organ formation and the birth this all studies we lead to the embryology what is the relationship between the histology and embryology i previously told you that the histology is the study of form and structure under the microscope or we can say the histology is the study of tissue so both histology and embryology provide informations about the morphology of the animal organs and their development histology is the study of microstructure of the animal body while embryology will explain the prenatal development of the animal so again i am repeating the study of form एंड स्ट्रक्चर जब भी आप फॉर्म एंड स्ट्रक्चर को पढ़ेंगे माइक्रोस्कोप के अंडर उसको हम माइक्रो एनाटमी कहेंगे या हिस्टोलॉजी कहेंगे और इन दोनों का बहुत ही करीबी एक रिलेशन है हिस्टोलॉजी का और एम्ब्रियोलॉजी का हिस्टोलॉजी हमें सिखाता है कि कैसे हम मॉर्फोलॉजी पढ़ें एनिमल ऑर्गन्स की अंडर द माइक्रोस्कोप और एनिमल ऑर्गन्स की डिवेलपमेंट हम किस चीज़ में पढ़ते हैं हम एम्ब्रियोलॉजी में पढ़ते हैं सो दिस इज़ वेरी रिलेटेड सब्जेक्ट्स सो एम्ब्रियोलॉजी वी स्टडी द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ जर्म सेल्स आफ्टर द फर्टिलाइजेशन अर्ली डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ एन एम्ब्रियो फॉर्मेशन एंड डेफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ द ऑर्गन्स टू द फीटस this all study include the embryology so embryology and histology 
having a very 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 close relationship the both subjects are inversely proportional to understand the formation and structure of the organs and organ systems and you know the organ systems form the body what is gametogenesis the formation of gametes in the gonads the formation of gametes in the male and female gonads is called gametogenesis the formation of sperm in the male gonads i e testes is called spermatogenesis and the formation of ova in the female gonads i e ovaries is called oogenesis so first we studies the oogenesis means the formation of ova inside the ovaries so how it forms the selective follicle mature at each cycle in response to circulating follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary glands the oogonia give rise to the primary oocyte followed by secondary oocytes so this all occur in the steps of the meiosis following the evolution from the by inhibitory secretion of follicle granulosa cells the secondary oocytes complete meiosis following by fertilizations and if the fertilization not occurs the unfertilized structure that is called the carbus albicans it degenerates and form a yellow colored structure that is called the carpus albicans so i will tell the details of these all follicle generation or we can say the folliculogenesis folliculogenesis is responsible for the formation of ova this is the process of the oogenesis so don't confuse between the two terms the folliculogenesis and oogenesis oogenesis is the production of ova and ovas are the female gametes i previously told you that the production of ova in the female gonads i e ovaries is called the oogenesis similarly the formation of sperms in the male gonads i e testes is called the spermatogenesis so sperms are the male gametes and ova are the female gametes and the process of male and female gametes is called the gametogenesis we will discuss first the oogenesis and laterly the spermatogenesis so what is oogenesis and what are the steps of the oogenesis during the fetal development large number of oogonia are formed by mitosis you can see a large number of oogonium in the orange circle the oogonia enlarge and do growth and undergo the meiosis but stop in the process first until the puberty they are now termed the primary oocyte and are held in the primary follicle so here the folliculogenesis starts and the formation of primary follicle occurs which contain the primary oocytes at the puberty some follicle develop each month in the response of follicle stimulating hormones in estrus cycle the follicle stimulating hormones is released by pituitary gland we also previously discussed the oocyte complete the first meiotic division the division of the cytoplasm is unequal creating a polar body 
the division of the cytoplasm is unequal by ending a creation of a first polar body. The secondary oocyte continues into meiosis 2 and halts at the prophase 2. The secondary oocytes develop along with the follicle. When the follicle is mature, it ruptures to release the secondary oocytes. With a small number of cells, the mature egg into the fallopian tube. The remaining follicle cells remain in the ovary to form the corpus luteum, which secrete the progesterone. What is progesterone? Progesterone is the hormone secreted by the corpus luteum, and this hormone's progesterone is also called the hormone of pregnancy. This hormone is responsible of keeping and maintaining the pregnancy until birth. When the birth occurs, when the birth starts, when the process of birth initiates, the first step which happens is the decrease the amount of progesterone in the bloodstream and there is increase in the amount of another hormone that is called the estrogen. So there is a unique relationship between the two hormones progesterone and estrogen. Surge of the estrogen is the one factor of initiation of birth when the process of uh, gestation completes in the animals. So the oocytes complete the meiosis too, forming an ovum. If the cell is fertilized, then the another polar body form. These polar bodies eventually degenerate after the end of the cycles. Follicular genesis. The primary follicle after the puberty due to increasing levels of FSH means follicle stimulating hormones the primary follicular cells enlarge and begin secreting estrogen. I previously told you that estrogen and progesterone having the opposite characteristics. The estrogen is also called the hormones of Easter cycle. The Easter cycle the hormones remains very high. In humans, the estrogen inhibit other follicle and their primary oocyte from the developing secondary follicle. The diploid primary oocyte undergo meiosis 1 and give rise to one haploid secondary oocyte and one polar body. I previously told you and showed you in a diagram. Several primary oocytes within several secondary follicles may start this process, but usually only one complete the process. The Graphian follicles that contain the haploid secondary oocyte and the first polar body due to the search of the luteinizing hormones LH secondary oocytes is overluted before meiosis 2 occurs. This slide shows the follicle maturation and evolution. You can see the primordial follicle, then the primary follicle, then the early secondary follicle, then the maturing follicle, then the mature follicle which is ready for rupturing and release of ova and then a rupture follicle and then the two structure the corpus luteum and the corpus albicans I previously told you that the degenerating structure when pregnancy not occurs an animal getting ready for the next Easter cycle this structure form this pale yellow degenerating structure is called corpus albicans. So luteinizing hormone surge the luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland. They cause changes in the tissue structure.
and cause the swelling with the follicle you can also see the ruptured follicle and the egg and the surrounding cells ejected into the peritoneum so now we are coming to the spermatogenesis spermatozoa which may be the several hundred millions per ejaculation the spermatogonia germ cells give rise to the primary spermatocytes by mitosis repetitively following puberty primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis the reduction division producing the secondary spermatocytes and the secondary spermatocytes complete meiosis the meiosis 2 produ producing the spermatids and undergo the spermatogenesis spermiogenesis transformation into the spermatozoa subsequently spermatozoa undergone the capacitation the capacitation is the removal of the surplus proteins that would able to contact the sperm to the ova the capacitation always occurs after the ejaculation of sperm inside the female genital tract or in vitro fertilization we can do the capacitation in the test tube before the fertilization so this slide shows the process of spermatogenesis you can see the spermatogonium and then the primary spermatocytes and then the formation of the secondary spermatocytes and then the spermatids and then the after the nourishment the mature sperms also you can see the mitosis and the first phase of the meiosis then the second phase of the meiosis and then the differentiations so very clear diagram you can understand the process of spermatogenesis so these are the glimpses of uh, next lecture so we will start the embryogenesis the embryogenesis is the defined as the formation and development of an embryo we will discuss it in the detail uh, in the next lecture after a sperm fuses with an egg many changes occur in a specific order the cell divide reorganize and form layers of the tissue that which eventually develop into specific organs and then the organ system develops and then the formation of the body structure and the organogenesis so these all things we will discuss in the next lecture in very detailed lecture thank you very much dear students and viewers so this is all for today's lecture and the next lecture will include the fertilization cleavage and gastrulation we will discuss the process of the fertilization cleavage and gastrulation in detail thank you very much again and see you in next lecture allah hafiz and bye bye